You've heard of nuclear-powered submarines, but what about nuclear-powered spaceships? In the past, this wild idea was limited to drawing boards and blueprints. Today it looks like America is dead serious about creating not just one spaceship capable of nuclear propulsion, but an entire fleet of these new age vessels. Why is the United States so fixated on this project? How much will it cost the taxpayers? What could go wrong? And is this really the first time we've attempted to use nuclear power to propel vehicles through space? Let's find out. It's no secret that the United States, and more specifically, NASA, is not the space age power it once was. It's been decades since we allegedly landed on the moon, and the most exciting developments today are in the private sector. But while SpaceX and other private companies are forging ahead with ambitious plans to explore space, the United States seems to be quietly revitalizing its government-funded space programs. During the Trump administration, the Space Force was officially created NASA also seems to be gathering steam with a number of new projects announced. The driving force behind this return to space is obvious. Russia. Before relations with Moscow soured, the United States was heavily reliant on Russian Soyuz rockets to get its astronauts to the International Space Station. Although sanctions have forced NASA to shift towards private companies to reach orbit, this exposes a much more obvious issue. Russia seems to be extremely capable when it comes to space exploration, especially in the context of rocket technology. The fear is simple. If the United States doesn't step up its game, the Russians and Chinese will dominate space. And because of this, America is going nuclear in an attempt to catch up. The United States has been playing with the idea of nuclear propulsion for many years. One of the earliest and most insane examples of this was Project Orion in the 40s and 50s. Basically, this theoretical spaceship would have propelled itself through space by crapping out nukes and riding the shockwave. Yes, the idea was simple, but effective. Because there's no friction in space, the shockwave from the nuclear blast would have sent this spaceship hurtling through the stars at incredibly high speeds. Although the idea sounds absolutely crazy, it would have resulted in higher performance compared to conventional rockets. But Project Orion never had the chance to prove its worth. In 1963, the Partial Test Ban Treaty prevented the United States from detonating nuclear warheads in space, and the project was ended. That being said, Orion left its mark on the scientific community, marking many spin-off projects and even science fiction books. While Project Orion would have used nuclear pulse propulsion, America's new fleet of spacecraft will use nuclear thermal rockets. The difference is pretty straightforward. While Project Orion's would have been propelled by nuclear detonations, these new vehicles would feature a reactor core that splits uranium atoms and releases heat. The concept is actually a lot more simple than it sounds. Essentially, it's the same idea as a kettle, only instead of water, you're using nuclear fuel, and instead of steam exiting through the spout, you have extremely hot, radioactive gas shooting out from a nozzle. This should produce twice as much thrust as a chemical rocket. Not only that, but these nuclear-powered spacecraft would allow for much faster voyages to Mars. Because of this, astronauts would be exposed to much less cosmic radiation. Another option is nuclear electric propulsion. 
which uses a reactor to create electric energy that can then be used to power an electrical thruster. These new engines have led to an entirely new government agency called DRACO. This stands for Demonstration Rocket for Agile Cislunar Operations, and people are already pointing out the obvious connections between this new project, the star constellation Draco, and the Draconian Conspiracy Theory. It seems strange that the US government would choose such an ominous name for this new project. The goal is to have these nuclear-powered spaceships in orbit by 2026. It's an incredibly ambitious goal, and it could signal the beginning of an entirely new era of space exploration. Apparently, the Draco program already has a number of conceptual designs in progress, provided by Blue Origin, Lockheed Martin, and General Atomics. But why is America so desperate to get advanced spacecraft into orbit? Why the rush? When you take a step back and look at current geopolitical events, the answer becomes obvious. This isn't like the space race of the 60s. The goal isn't to explore the stars or reach new planets. This is all about establishing military supremacy. The truth is that Russia and China are becoming much more dominant in space with each passing day. Rumors are swirling about all kinds of new space-aged weapons. From Chinese nuclear hypersonic devices to Russian anti-satellite systems, the implications are clear. The next major battles could be fought in space. Whoever controls the stars controls the satellites, and whoever controls the satellites controls GPS, cell phones, and the entire internet. Perhaps most importantly, it is much easier to launch nukes from space without any fear of interception. According to US officials, China already has this capability thanks to its space station and hypersonic missile technology. If the Draco program really is creating military-grade space weapons, then we can expect America's new fleet of nuclear vessels to be armed to the teeth. But what would a battle in space actually look like? The most obvious space weapons would be guided missiles. But weight is very important when you're dealing with spacecraft, and a vessel would only have the capability to take so many missiles into orbit. A more likely option is some kind of energy weapon that is powered by the ship's nuclear reactor core. With this approach, the spacecraft wouldn't need to lug heavy missiles into orbit, and it wouldn't run out of ammunition. The Space Force has publicly acknowledged just one weapon, a signal jammer that can block satellite communications. But the Space Force also apparently has a so-called black weapon that it will soon reveal to the world, and this weapon system is not kinetic in nature. Some say it's some kind of particle beam or laser. One of Draco's key priorities is also agility, implying that America's new space fleet will have the capability to outmaneuver its foes during orbital dogfights. Project Orion was shut down for a reason. It was seen as far too controversial, as nuclear bombs, and nuclear power in general, have considerable risks in the context of space technology. Those risks still exist today. Remember, we have seen our fair share of space shuttle disasters over the years. Replace chemical propellants with nuclear thrusters, and you raise the stakes considerably. The truth is that the United States doesn't have much of a choice anymore. It accepts these risks because if it waits any longer, China and Russia will leave it in the dust. This new age of space technology is both exciting and worrying, and it implies that interstellar warfare may be closer than any of us realize. And in the end, of course, the taxpayers will be the ones left holding the bill.